Hello YouTube, Justin Deering here, uh, and we're going to talk about a channel lock product. Now what I'm not going to be talking about is uh, perhaps the most famous uh, channel lock product of all the channel lock Ruben pliers and the most famous uh, model inside the 440, which um, made in the USA. Uh, bought this at Home Depot, you probably can't see that too clearly, unfortunately, due to the lighting. But, I know what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying to you. I know, do you ever ask yourself, what if channel lock made adjustable wrenches? I never asked myself that question. Never. Never did. Um, however, for other reasons, I ended up purchasing this. The uh, 8SWCB Wide As. Okay, pliers, and this is the unboxing, okay? Um, now, uh, Channel Locks make several, uh, yeah, they make a whole bunch of tools under their name. Um, you know, they're, they're quality tools. Uh, this is not made in America. I will say this is made in uh, Spain. And uh, that is a particular, uh, that is slightly concerning. Not that I, I, um, I didn't buy these particularly because they were made in America. I'll get into why I, I, I bought them. Uh, actually, yeah, I'll get into why I bought them now. Uh, see this? They're actually uh, slightly thinner uh, than they're actually designed to be thin. Okay, how thin are they designed to be? Let's go over. I apologize. <laughs> well, how thin are they? Well, uh... At advertised, they were supposed to be 3 16 of an inch thick. Okay, and uh, actually, they seemed a little thicker. I hope they will do exactly the one thing I bought them for. Uh, actually, wait. That is a quarter of an inch, so 4 16. Yeah, that actually, so that red mark, I should probably mark the top of this um, here. But anyway, uh, I assure you, that these are actually uh, 3 16 of an inch uh, because that little red mark you see um, I mark that uh, as a quarter of an inch uh, and and the top tick up here is is um, yeah is is right before that so it, it's uh, so 4 16 minus 1 16 to 3 16 uh, though the 16 inch uh, ticks on that mark um, anyway uh, so yes I bought this to be particularly uh, Thin and to serve a particular purpose, um, and we'll get into that later. Uh, but anyway, some cool features of this wrench before I get into that. Um, over here, you can't see this too well, so it opens up to one and a half inches. Uh, I believe it actually opens a little further than that, uh, but it has uh, markings on this up to half an inch. It goes zero inch, half inch, one inch, and then half an inch again. I don't know why they couldn't just engrave a little one over here. On the back, you have metric. Um, it actually opened a little wider than that. Uh, but that is a super, super cool feature. Um, so this replaces a, uh, yeah, this, this replaces uh, basically um, the outside portion of my calipers over here. Uh, my calipers obviously have the ability to me measure uh, interior diameters with, with this side over here. Uh, and they open all the way up to five inches or uh, looks like 12 and a half centimeters, 12 and a half centimeters. Uh, so it won't completely replace it, but um, yeah, I've got another thing over here. The fact that they're actually a lot thicker than my calipers are going to be good for measuring uh, the exterior diameter of um, bolts because uh, obviously my calipers, yeah, I mean these, these, um, these uh, won't, um, yeah, because you're supposed to measure both based on the exterior of the threads. Um, and those will get inside. So actually between this and my caliper, I can measure the interior and exterior both if uh, to measure thread depth if I ever need to uh, to do that. Um, okay, another cool feature someone pointed out on another uh, YouTube review of this. Um, there is an extra, there's basically an extra um, thread over here. This, this has about three threads. Well, for a certain portion, there's a little bit of overlap where there's uh, four threads, whereas here, like, the threads meet exactly, so I'd, I'd say there's about half a thread more of this uh, knurled adjustable wrench over here. Um, 
So uh, that, I guess, lets you move it with precision or whatever. Uh, it moves pretty smoothly. One thing I'm kind of uh, concerned about, and I'm actually going to write the channel lock, uh, not terribly concerned, um, is uh, this is covered in like a light machine oil. Uh, you know, something uh, might, you know, like a, a like a three-in-one machine oil seems to be, might be something slightly less, uh, slightly less viscous, uh, might be a more advanced version of that. Um, and the reason I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly, well, the reason I'm not concerned about it, because obviously, uh, well, I can completely take this apart. There's a, uh, in here, there's a, a set screw, and I can, I can do a teardown, which I'm not going to do now. Uh, I think maybe I will stop this video, uh, restart the video immediately, and uh, do what I'm going to do with it. Um, which is try to take apart, uh, uh, take apart an old router, um, and maybe then I will do it. Not, but uh, yeah, my concern is like I just I feel you know being this is a modern uh, design. Uh, a why didn't you just go with uh, a thicker lithium grease, which would be if I was going to uh, which I which is what I would like use to recon possibly recondition this, or why not go with like a dry lube like a, a Teflon, um, you know, uh, yeah, like a Teflon. Uh, um, you know, you know, a dry lube over here. So I'm actually going to write to them because I'm, I'm curious what their decision was. Uh, again, not terribly worried about this, um, because these are very simple to tear down, uh, very durable. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and like I said, this worked like butter for now, you know, worst case scenario, I just keep, you know, relubricating it. Uh, you know, uh, it doesn't look like the same color steel as my channel locks. So I don't know if it's the same grade metal. Um, I am, uh, one thing I'm, I'm, I like about the channel locks is, you know, they, they really, really good metal. Uh, you know, if you ever own a pair of, you know, plumbers, uh, you know, you, you abuse these things. Okay. Um, I mean, I've never seen a pair of channel locks with like really messed up teeth. I mean, I haven't abused mine too much, but even, you know, if you look at like my plumbers, uh, I'm sure the teeth wouldn't be too terribly messed up. Uh, those great gripping teeth. So that's the, the. I guess the weak, not the weakest, but the thinnest point. So the prone to there or there where most of the, the pressure is on these teeth, they tend not to wear down. Uh, and because these are thinner this way, you know, they're, and, and they open wider, uh, you know, they're, they're more prone to, um, you know, they're at a disadvantage uh, compared to these really thick um, wrenches. If I open this up all the way, you know, if I open up a really wide one and a half, if I were to open up one and a half inch nut with this, uh, yeah, I'd, 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 you know, I'd be concerned about breakage if it was really tight um so yeah that 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 would have been uh so so i would want to compensate with really good metal uh you know like i said made in spain not made in the uh china uh so it's not chinesium and i i would you know assume they're they're using a you know good good metal there i'm assuming if they they chose to outsource to spain um you know there's a cost you know spain portugal probably uh more of the the poorest of the two countries um, uh, of, of the European countries, maybe, maybe Greece. Uh, so, I mean, obviously you can, uh, you know, get cheap, cheaper, la cheap for European labor there. Uh, but you know, you still have probably, uh, you know, uh, people care about quality, um, there. Anyway, yeah, so actually, I'm going to refer to my notes, which I put on the other side of the room. Just want to make sure I carry it. Yeah, so one and a half inch wide. Uh, you've got exterior caliber usage, uh, larger neural screw. Um, I do have the concern with lubrication. Um, you know, really glad these are made in uh, Spain. Uh, so I guess I would put these on the same level as, um, hopefully, you know, in time when I test these, uh, if you know, the brand Wearer, which is uh, a German company where it makes manufactured stuff in Czechoslovakia, uh, I assume it's going to be the same thing, you know, where, where you have a USA company outsourcing to a a, you know, a country that's not China where they can actually care about quality. Um, the handle is uh, China Lock Blue. It is not the same feel as this. Okay, this is a very smooth, traditional, um, you know, whatever uh, kind of good. Uh, I'm sure these are definitely insulated because uh, these are the same material they use for their linesman pliers, which is an electrician's uh, tool, which is probably their second most uh, famous line of tools, uh, second most popular one. This is a slightly different, uh, has a different smell to it. It, it, it's, it's, it's not, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's different. It's, it's a different shade of blue. Um, but yeah, you know, it, 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 it's good.
You'll do it as good. Um, one thing I was concerned about is, for my particular application, I might need a breaker bar. How wide is this? Um, how wide is this over here? How, what is the, uh, yeah, basically I'm, uh, I think people might, might actually be concerned about this. I'm doing this for you, YouTube. I'm going to actually put Amazon reviews and stuff, Home Depot reviews. Um, so, uh, I believe that is, so it's probably two and, uh, that's probably the half inch. So that's probably, so it's two and a quarter. Let me just go in over here. I, uh, one, oh, I'm sorry. So that's one inch. So that would be one and a quarter inch. So, uh, I'll just do this. Yeah, uh, I would, I would, I would get one and uh, one and a half inch pipe if I was going to use this as an extension bar. Uh, I'll probably put in the description maybe how long it really is. But anyway, really good wrench. I'm going to stop this and restart it again. Uh, thanks for watching, and we're going to actually see what I do with this, which is try to open the collet nut on my 1976 Black & Decker router I bought for 20 bucks that I've, uh, with this tool, I've put more than 100 bucks into uh, tools and stuff to, to rehabilitate a router uh, when I could have just, you know, gone to Home Depot, bought a new one. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. It's been a lot of fun, been a lot of learning.